Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Differentiate between algebraic expressions and equations. Define equation and terms related to it. Illustrate linear equation and inequality in one variable. And translate English sentences to mathematical sentences and vice versa. From my video lesson on translating algebraic phrase to mathematical phrase and vice versa, we have learned about mathematical sentence and mathematical phrase. Let's have a quick review on it. Tell whether the following is a mathematical sentence or a mathematical phrase. This one is a mathematical phrase. Number two is mathematical sentence. Three is mathematical phrase. Four is mathematical sentence. Five is mathematical sentence. Six is also mathematical sentence as well as seven. A mathematical sentence has complete thought. It uses symbol of relationship. What are those symbols? If it is equation, we make use of equal sign. If it is inequality, we make use of not equal, less than, greater than, less than or equal, and greater than or equal. An algebraic expression is a mathematical phrase that combines numbers and or variables and connected by operation, like number 1 and number 3. Expressions do not contain equality and inequality symbols. Number 2, it has an equal sign, as well as number 4, number 5, 6, and 7, uses inequality symbols. That's why it is not just mathematical phrase. If it has an equal sign, we now call it algebraic equation, and it is considered as a mathematical sentence. Both sides of the equation are called expressions. If it has inequality symbols, we call it algebraic inequality. It is also a mathematical sentence. Let us define some terms. Equation. It is a mathematical sentence that denotes the equality of two mathematical expressions. Examples. This is a numerical equation. These are all constants. Number two is an algebraic equation. We have variables here. Number three is also an algebraic equation. Unknown is the variable in the equation. In number 2, it is the variable x. Solution or root is the particular value of the unknown that satisfies the given equation. After solving, the value of x is called the solution or root. Extraneous root. It is the root of the derived equation but not the root of the given equation. Sometimes, we arrive with a solution that does not satisfy the original equation. If that is the case, the value is called extraneous root. Here are some kinds of equations. Identity equation, an equation that is true for any number substituted to the variable. Examples, in number 1, commutative property applies. In number 2, the right-hand side is the expanded form of the left-hand side. While in number 3, the right-hand side is the factored form of the left-hand side. Next one is the conditional equation, an equation that is true only for certain values of the unknown. Examples. So this type of equation is what usually given to us. Here we solve for the value of the unknown. Next one is equivalent equations. Equations that have the same solution set. Examples. Here, if we are going to move negative 12 on the other side, it will be 6x equals 12. When you solve for x, the value is equal to 2. So these three are equivalent equations. Same is true for number 2. Last one is inconsistent equation. An equation that has no solution. Examples. 
The square root of negative 1 gives us an imaginary answer. That is why it is an inconsistent equation. In here, if we cancel 6x on both sides of the equation, negative 7 is not equal to negative 10. Hence, it is also an inconsistent equation. Let us continue. Linear equation in one variable. An equation that can be written in the form of ax plus b equals c, where a, b, and c are all real numbers and a is not equal to zero. It is also known as first degree equation because the highest exponent of the variable is one. Here are some examples. In here, you will see that the exponent of x is invisible 1. Let's have an activity. Tell whether the following is a linear equation or not a linear equation. Number 1, what do you think? Is this LE or NLE? This is NLE. Why? Because we have two variables here. Linear equation should contain only one variable. Number two, this is LE. The exponent of x here is 1. How about number three, LE or NLE? This is NLE. Why? Because when we expand this, this will become x squared. So the exponent is no longer 1, but 2. Number four. What do you think? This is NLE. Mom, why? The exponent of x here is 1. Yes, but notice that the variable appears in the denominator. If that is the case, that is not a linear equation. It should be like this. Even though there is a fraction, the variable appears in the numerator. So this one is a linear equation. This time, we are going to translate English sentence to mathematical sentence. Number one, three-fifths of a number. So we have three-fifths of a number is, that is equal sign, 12. Number two, thrice a number. So we have thrice a number is 900. Number three, twice a number, decrease, it means subtraction by 10 is greater than, so we're going to make use of greater than symbol, 25. Number four, the sum, so the operation is addition, the sum of a number and seven is 20. Number five, the difference, so the operation is subtraction, difference of a number and nine. Divided by 4 is equal to 15. Number 6, the circumference of a circle. The formula for circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. is not more than 50 inches. So it could be equal to 50 but not more than it. So we're going to make use of less than or equal. It could be equal to 50 but not more than 50 so it could be less than 50 let's do extra challenge the sum of three consecutive numbers is at least 28 when we say consecutive numbers it's like one two three so if we are going to set the first number as x the next number to it is x plus one the next number to x plus 1 is x plus 1 plus 1. And this is equal to x plus 2. So if we have sum of three consecutive numbers, that means x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 is at least 28. At least 28. So the minimum number is 28. It could not be lesser than that. So we're going to use greater than or equal. It could be equal to 28, but not less than that. So it could be greater than 28. Number two, 
the ratio. If we say ratio, it means we have a fraction. The ratio of 6 less than a number. Take note, than is a switch word. So we're going to write first a number and then 6 less. The ratio of 6 less than a number and 7 is at most 17. So the maximum number is 17. It could not be greater than that. Therefore, we're going to use less than or equal. It could be equal to 17 but not greater than 17, so it could be less than 17. Let us have some real-life application. Number one, our monthly internet bill is at least 1,000 pesos. Let me use B for bill. It's at least 1,000. So the minimum amount is 1,000, but it could be greater than that. So I'll be using greater than or equal. So, B is greater than or equal to 1,000. Number two, Mr. Santos earns not less than 35,000 a month. Let me use S as my variable, not less than 35. So, meaning 35,000 is the minimum number. So, it could be greater than that. So, S is greater than or equal to 35,000. Next one, I got my dress with a discount of not less than 10%. Let me use D for my variable, not less than 10%. So, meaning 10% is the minimum discount. It could be greater than that. So, D is greater than or equal to 10%. When we write it in decimal, that would be 0 0.10. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. 3 times the measure of an angle. So, let's have 3A is an acute angle. Take note that an acute angle measures less than 90 degrees, so less than 90. Number two, express 35 into sum of two numbers. So 35 is equal to sum, operation is addition, two numbers such that one number is three-fourths of the other. So the other number is n and the other number is three-fourths of n. Number three, the sum of two consecutive even numbers. Even numbers. So we have x plus x plus 2 is greater than 40. Number four, Sydney is twice the age of Vincent. The sum, so the operation is addition, of their ages is at most 21. So if Vincent is x, then Sydney is twice of Vincent, so 2x. The sum of their ages is at most 21. So the maximum number is 21. It could be equal to 21, but not greater than 21. So we're going to make use of less than or equal to 21. Last one, the difference. So the operation is subtraction. 9 times a number, 9 times a number, and 5 is no more than 15. So, no more than 15, it could be equal to 15, but not greater than 15. So, again, we're going to make use of less than or equal to 15. Gets? Our next lesson is solving linear equations in one variable. 